if it works this time. Ah, ah now it's working. It's working. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So we would like to warmly welcome you to all to the second webinar of the TurboClick webinar series in 2018. It is a cross-sectoral group. We are working on the topics of inclusive cities, urban governance, and building resilience, low carbon development, and capacity development. Uh, the webinar series aims at exchanging experience, uh, experiences and good practices among our members as well as other partners. This webinar will be about approaches for multi-level climate governance and vertically integrated climate policies. My name is Eva Ringhoff. I'm CDS Program Manager, and uh, I'm joint speaker of TurboClick. So the first presentation will be on multi-level climate governance from Lisa Lebershausen. We will have a second presentation on vertically integrated climate policies from Jacob Lindemann. And the third one is an online system for monitoring, evaluation, and reporting uh, the so-called PAP online from uh, Rio, uh, from Indonesia. So the first presentation will be Lisa Lebershausen. And uh, it is a theoretic framework and example for instruments to support local action. Lisa Lebershausen holds a master degree in international development studies. She has taken part in BMSAT's and GISAT's Young Professional Program for Development Cooperation, working as junior advisor on sustainable urban infrastructures and cities and climate change with GISAT India, including secondments to water and sanitation program at the World Bank, Delhi office, and ICLE South Asia Secretariat. Lisa worked as researcher and project coordinator with the Human City Foundation in Bogota, Colombia. In 2015, she joined GISAT in Berlin, where she works as an advisor on climate policy and urban development to the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature Conversation, and nu Nuclear Safety from the uh, BMU. So uh, a warm welcome, Lisa. Could you please take over as presenter? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Eva, and hello, good morning and good afternoon to everybody. So, um, I will present you, as Eva just introduced, um, a theoretical framework for multi-level climate governance, uh, including examples for certain instruments to enhance local climate action. And let me just say that my presentation is uh, based on preliminary findings from a study that is currently implemented for us by Adelphi. It's going to be finalized uh, very soon, by the end of this month, so um, further information is then uh, available through this uh, publication that we will, of course, also share with the whole network. So what am I going to present you to give you a brief overview? Um, I will give an introduction to the concept of multi-level climate governance. Um, I would also like to briefly present different dimensions and principles of multi-level climate governance, provide you with an overview of existing instruments in this context, um, including looking into a few examples, um, including probably a case of India, but uh, it depends if the time will allow that. So, well, let's get started. Um, looking into multi-level climate governance, what it is, uh, there are some underlying ideas. First of all is that cities, of course, play a crucial role for the implementation of mitigation and adaptation activities and for the implementation of climate policies. Of course, they do not act isolated, but they, they are um, within their respective national government frameworks, which basically determine their abilities to act um, and, and to implement uh, different uh, climate-related actions. But on the other hand, the national level also depends on the support of the local actions to implement uh, the national policies, to implement the, uh, the NDCs, the nationally determined contributions. So we can say there is kind of a mutual dependency between the different government levels. Um, there's another assumption that if we have a better cooperation and coordination among all these different spheres of government and different actors, that can lead to more effective action and also maybe to more ambitious uh, activities. 
So um, one definition of multi-level governance can be that it encompasses the structural and institutional settings in which different levels of government distribute roles and responsibilities with regard to climate action, how they coordinate and cooperate on climate activities, including the specific instruments that are in place at the different levels to support and implement uh, climate action. When we talk about climate action, just to make that sure, it always includes both mitigation activities and adaptation activities. So looking into the actors' dimensions and let's say kind of operating principles, the functions of multi-level government uh, and, and its instruments, of course there is in total, if we look at the broad picture, both public and private actors involved in all these activities. Especially at the local level, it's important to also take into account the activities of civil society, local business, etc. Nevertheless, for the for this for this presentation and for this study that we're looking at, we will concentrate on the private spheres, on the different government levels. You can see them on the right. So it's from local to subnational level, which refers to regions, to provinces, uh, federal states, etc. The national level, which is the main nucleus we want to concentrate on, but there's also a sub supranational level, for example, in the EU, or the international level, which mainly refers to, for example, negotiations taking place at UNFCCC, but we will not take this into, into account for the moment. Um, in general, you can say that multi-level climate governance um, can enhance the cooperation um, both on a horizontal level, for example, between different sector ministries or different departments at the local level, but it can also be between different municipalities working together. And it can enhance this cooperation vertically, so between those different levels which I, I just mentioned and which you can see on the right. When we look at how this works, um, we can say that a certain governance framework in place in one country or even different instruments can have um, a top-down or a bottom-up character. So top-down would be that the national level is mainly in charge of shaping the policies and um, defining what is going to happen with regard to climate action in one country. Bottom-up would mean that there is a, a strong local level, which may even be a little bit of forerunner in climate action and be even more ambitious than the national level. And of course, you have a hybrid character where you can find a combination of both. It's important to say that this is theoretical frameworks. It's theoretical ways of how to look at uh, multi-level climate governance in literature. Um, and of course, it's not a strict categorization. It's more kind of a tendency to look um, how is climate action driven in a specific country. So um, looking into the governance instruments or so certain ways, uh, means, mechanisms, how this can be done. Um, one important aspect is that multi-level climate governance addresses different governance gaps or to put it in a more positive way to improve certain governance capacities. So here we picked out four different pillars which are mainly important with regard to climate change. First of all is the availability of information and knowledge. Second, it's the cooperation and coordination between the different actors. Then third, it is of course the availability of financial resources and, and also the way these this financial resources are used. And uh, lastly, the institutional capacities at the different levels. All these the instruments aim at engaging and enabling the different actors. This can be very soft measures, for example, through information or consultation. Uh, there can be motivation of certain activities, for example, through incentives. There may be provision um, of resources, of information, etc. Or it can also be governing by command, for example, because there is a direct um, target set by the national government for the local governments or similar things. So all in all, this is then supporting the implementation of the climate policies or the NDCs in the Paris Agreement as stated in the beginning. So on the next slide, you will see a quite complex um, illustration. You can see in the back 
uh, circles, which again look at these different governance gaps. So on the upper left, information and knowledge, on the right, institutional capacities, and on the bottom you can see coordination and cooperation and finance as the last pillar. So in the boxes, you can find different uh, types of instruments, different categories and subcategories and examples, which in one or several ways address these governance gaps and governance capacities. So I'd like just to go through a little bit to give you an idea what can be understood as a mechanism or instrument to enhance multi-level climate governance in a country. So first of all, we have monitoring and reporting. Um, this is important for information management between uh, different actors. So one example is greenhouse gas accounting standards, which, which exist um, globally from different actors like uh, ICLE and World Resources Institute, C40, etc. But it's also imaginable to have something like that on a national level. Um, there are different reporting platforms for climate targets um, to, to talk about what has already happened at the local level. Another um, element would be target seconding incentives. This is very often done through award schemes or certification schemes. Um, for example, in Europe, there is the European Energy Award. So there is uh, this opportunity for cities to commit to certain um, mitigation reduction targets, and then they have to fulfill certain um, activities to to finally have a certification or an, an award uh, and gain like recognition or these schemes can also be uh, um, combined with financial incentives. The European Energy Award has already been adapted and implemented in countries outside Europe, for example, in Morocco and in Chile. Another very important part is a national policy alignment, which is basically looking into coordination and cooperation of different actors. One part is mainstreaming either urban issues and cities into national climate strategies or vice versa, for example, making sure that climate change is addressed in national urban policies. It also, of course, refers to the alignment of different sector policies or so a horizontal level, which can happen both at national, regional or local level. Let's say the alignment of um, energy and transport policies, to give you an example. And then in a more institutionalized way, we have um, international ministerial climate change committees, which exist, for example, in Kenya or something similar exists in the Philippines, where different ministries um, engage to coordinate the activities on climate change on the national level. But it's also possible to have this at the different other subnational levels. Similar national or regional climate change platforms. And as a, a third category within this cluster, we could have the participatory policy and strategy development processes, so consultation for policy development. Uh, this happened, for example, in Germany uh, in a broad consultation process, including municipalities, civil society, and businesses for the development of the German long term climate strategy. So another cluster, which you can see in the middle, uh, which is basically looking into coordination, cooperation, but also information and institutional capacities is, of course, knowledge, knowledge exchange and peer-to-peer -peer learning, which is supported by national or international city networks or city partnerships and twinning. And um, as another form in intermunicipal um, or regional cooperation, there we have different instruments in place. One could be, for example, um, the development of metropolitan governance institutions um, so that different municipalities uh, jointly develop and implement certain strategies. Um, one example is from Mexico, where you have an uh, environmental commission in the metropolitan region of Mexico City, uh, looking jointly to how to address environmental issues. Um, another option would uh, be shared municipal power or resource pooling. This can be that either, for example, different municipalities share something like a climate manager, some, uh, some expert person who helps them uh, develop and implement certain activities, or they can also group 
um, for example, in the way of shared um, subnational pooled finance mechanisms. So to jointly address, um, uh, to jointly apply, for example, for funds. This is also one of the mechanisms that can be used. Then, of course, uh, with regard to institutional capacities, uh, one big issue is capacity development at the, uh, at the local level through trainings, through mentoring, uh, financing for expert personnel, and of course, um, ensuring long term skilled public staff is available. And the last big pillar is, of course, finance as a very important part in uh, mitigation and adaptation issues. So, um, one issue is increasing municipal own source revenues, which may be possible depending on, of course, the governance setting and the, the, the mandates at the local level through charges and fees, taxes or bonds. One example is the carbon tax in the city of Boulder, which is probably the first city who in, in had a carbon tax in place. So they they put a tax on the consumption of fossil fuel based energy and use the money um, again for different mitigation and adaptation um, activities on the ground. And an even bigger part of finance, just looking into the into the national sphere, so leaving out for the moment completely the international funds, is of course the transfers from the national level to the local level, which can have conditional um, uh, can can be conditioned, for example, that they say you will receive more funds if you consider climate action um, at the local level. And of course, you have this whole sphere of grants and loans from, for example, uh, regional or national development banks or subsidies and support programs like, for example, the National Climate Initiative in Germany, which provides funds and uh, information for local climate action. So you can see there is a whole picture. And uh, just to quickly finalize, here you can see a map of the different examples that are going to be detailed a little bit more in the study I've talked to you about. Um, it also includes some country cases, which are uh, Colombia, Brazil, South Africa, and India, to give an idea of how is the overall setting within the countries. So. Um, I will not go further into detail than in, in the Indian case, so we'll leave this out for, for the time issue. And well, just let me conclude. You, you can see that multi-level climate governance um, as a whole is an approach to harness climate action potentials at all levels, especially also from the subnational levels. Um, capacity development, policy alignment, coordination between the different actors and finance are these four like important and main pillars in this concept. There is a broad range of instruments available already in different countries to enhance cooperation and support, both work vertically and horizontally. And of course, there is no one size, size fits all solutions and not everything is possible in each country, but uh, there is a, a big number of illustrative examples from around the world, from different countries in different situations, um, which can be used to learn from and to get inspired. So, well, thank you very much for the moment. And I'm looking forward to hear from the other colleagues who I'm sure will give you, will give us more idea of how is this working in practice. Thank you very much, Lisa. This uh, was a very comprehensive overview of multi-level instruments, uh, really interesting. And now we, uh, we will have an in-depth look into the policy aspects. So the second presentation will be from Jacob Lindemann on vertically integrated climate policies, a project overview and an approach. Jacob Lindemann works as an advisor in Bonn for the GIZ-supported uh, VICLIM program. Uh, it is a global program financed through the International Climate Initiative, ICI, by the German Federal Ministry of the Environment, BMUB. And since 2016, he has worked for GIZ in different projects on decentralization, urban development and climate change adaptation in Sri Lanka, Ethiopia, and Mauritania. He holds a diploma in geography. Welcome, Jacob, and please take over as presenter. 
Yeah, hello also from my side. Um, anybody cannot hear me? No, sounds good. So, um, yeah, I, I want to uh, give you a very, very quick overview um, on the VKLIM project. Uh, VKLIM, yeah, it stands for Vertically Integrated Climate Policies. Um, as mentioned, it, it is a global project, a global program working in five countries all over the world, as you can see from the east to the west, Indonesia, Georgia, South Africa, Costa Rica and uh, Mexico. Um, I think I can actually skip this uh, slide uh, since uh, Lisa already gave, uh, I would say, a little bit much better definition of uh, multi-level climate governance or maybe also in other words, vertically integrated climate policies, climate action. We have our own short definition. That's why I put it into uh, quotation marks. Also because our project um, works only or focuses only on mitigation. So in the end, as Lisa already said, it's about uh, coordination between the spheres of government at the national level. Um, that means national, regional, local, but of course there is also the supranational and the um, international level in order to jointly develop, implement and monitor policies, programs, but also uh, singular actions. And in our case, designed to reduce greenhouse gas uh, emissions. So our project, again, it focuses on mitigation and does not work on adaptation, although, of course, climate policies, climate action entails both. Um, in the end, the objective, the overall objective of VCLIM is that, of course, the national climate targets, in the end, the NDCs, the National Determined Contributions, are achieved by our partner countries in general by integrating in a more effective and efficient and more coordinated way the, in general, sub-national stakeholders in climate action. So the outputs um, that we work on in the five countries, but you will see in the next slide that we, we do very different uh, uh, actual uh, activities in the countries because uh, all the countries, they are at different levels in their climate policy, in their climate action plan implementation. They have different problems in terms of mitigation. Their greenhouse gas emissions come from very different sectors. But all in all, we want to, and these are our outputs, our envisaged outputs, we want to improve the framework conditions for implementing these coordinated or better coordinated mitigation actions. We are looking into already existing subnational mitigation actions. So what is already going on in the countries at the locals, at the local level? We want to promote them and try to upscale them. On the left side, uh, the third output, and Lisa mentioned this already, we would like to share some experiences and develop uh, measures based on this Germany's National Climate Initiative. It is a fun, uh, or it, entails actually a, a number of uh, funding programs from the national level, so from the federal level to the local level, to the municipalities directly for climate change actions. And as a fourth, fourth output, um, it is initiating international exchange processes. So this this webinar is also one part of it and uh, cooperate with uh, networks and platforms that are existing already and that are already used in order to um, exchange knowledge. Very, again, very quickly, because um, my colleague Rio will afterwards uh, go into detail for, um, for one instrument that VKLIM and also other GIZ uh, projects have supported in Indonesia. But what are we doing in the, in the countries? For example, in Mexico, there was an uh, informative NDC toolbox um, developed, including an awareness raising videos for the subnational actors which actually explained for the first time to the local level and also to the federal state level, um, what are the roles um, to achieve the NDCs? What are the Mexican NDCs actually? We found out that the information uh, about the NDCs 
getting more and more difficult uh, at the at the lower level and at the local level. How can we take into account the results of uh, mitigation actions that are already ongoing um, at the local level? And uh, we, for example, in one federal state, in the state of Jalisco, we developed uh, guidelines for the development of municipal climate action plans. In Costa Rica, they have uh, already a carbon neutrality country program. Costa Rica is uh, quite advanced. Now they just developed uh, uh, an extra program for municipalities. How can they feed into the national program? So we are training the municipality staff in one of the first steps of uh, climate action in greenhouse gas inventories and in developing local climate action plans. In South Africa, we focus a lot on one sector, which is energy efficiency in public buildings and infrastructure. It is one of the yeah, main sectors uh, and sometimes yeah, we can also say a rather low hanging fruit um, where local governments can uh, step in for, for mitigation of greenhouse gases. So how can we make local governments infrastructure that means um, um, water treatment plants, but also fresh water supply, street lightning, I think in all countries you've heard about this activity already, how can we save uh, energy in order to save greenhouse gases in the end? So we support their better data management, the monitoring, we train in monitoring and um, in financing of uh, actions and of energy efficiency measures. As a last slide, uh, because this was not, in, these three countries are not uh, in Asia, um, in Georgia, we support the developing, we support uh, in developing a new climate action plan. They are in process doing that also together with another uh, GIZ project and try, as Lisa also said, to incorporate from the beginning already and which has been done in a, in a, in a quite good way in Germany, for example, to try to incorporate from the beginning the local municipal level to listen to them to see what can they uh, contribute. And there in Georgia we try also to uh, exchange some experience and knowledges about the Germany's NKE approaches and with the aim in the end that maybe Georgia will, um, will build up a funding program for municipalities as well. Last but not least, Indonesia, you will hear about the PEP online system um, in one second, uh, but other activities are, for example, training of provincial staff in mitigation project development and management. So we go with them through a project uh, cycle. We look into what is going on in the cities already, how did they develop uh, some mitigation projects in the districts and cities. And uh, one important, uh, one very important activity is that the subnational mitigation plans, which has existed already for for some years, now have to uh, now have to be adapted to a new national overall development strategy, which actually um, brings together and include economic growth, poverty um, elevation, but also yeah, climate change mitigation and environmental sounds, sound actions. Thank you very much and voila. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, really interesting. I think also the experience you made in the countries, there might be some interesting tools for our colleagues like the NDC toolbox from Mexico. So uh, just as a hint, if you have a, a, a link to share, please share it in the chat uh, because it might be relevant for a lot of our colleagues. But now we will come to our next contribution uh, from Indonesia held by Rayo Audi. It's about the online system for monitoring and evaluation and reporting, MER, for subnational mitigation action plan, the PEP online. So uh, Mr. Rayo Audi is a technical project professional in Paklin. 
the policy advice for environment and climate change. It's a project between GIZ and BAPENAS. BAPENAS is the Ministry of National Development Planning in Jakarta, Indonesia, and works for GIZ-supported global program, VICLIM, so the Vertically Integrated Climate Policies for Indonesia. His expertise in environment uh, engineering and clean energy Rio holds a Master of Environment and a Bachelor Degree in Environmental Engineering. Welcome, Rio, and please take over as presenter. Kindly unmute your phone, your mic. Okay, right now, you can hear me, right? Sorry for that. Okay, good morning and good afternoon for our friends all over the world. Um, this presentation is about online system for monitoring, evaluation, and reporting, or MDR, of subnational greenhouse gas mitigation action, action plan in Indonesia, or we call it PEP online. Some abbreviations before we start, uh, it will, have some uh, abbreviation here. Perpres is presidential regulation. Rangerga, which is is the national mitigation action plan. The Ratgerga, it is the provincial mitigation action plan. Mer is the monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. And PEP is the Mer in Indonesian language. And the last is PPRK is the abbreviation for low carbon development planning. I'll remind you when it uh, slides go going on. Uh, the first thing is, uh, in Indonesia, we have the Ministry of National Development Planning, or we call it BAPENAS, and the role of BAPENAS in climate change action can be consist of three main uh, legal bases. The first, from the Article 3.4 of UNFCCC, it stated that the policy on climate system should be integrated with the national development programs. So therefore, the role of BAPANAS is to deliver this, uh, this uh, task. The second one, the second legal basis, which is, is the main part of the legal basis, is the presidential regulation, or PERPRES, number 61, for RAN and RAD Gierka, the national and the provincial action plan on greenhouse gas emission reduction. This is the basis for the Indonesian government to conduct both national and provincial level of Greenhouse Gas Mitigation Action Plan. And the third one is the two PERPRES, number 65 and 66 for National Development Planning, which mentioned the task of BAPANAS on policy formulation, coordination, and de in development planning administration. So based on these three legal bases, I could say, uh, it is the role of BAPANAS to mainstream the climate change into the National Development Planning. Uh, have a look of the pen press number 61, Ran and Rat Gierka, because the uh, next slide will going on on that thing. Here's the timeline. The pen press, as mentioned previously, pen press number 61 is the legal basis for national and subnational uh, level government to conduct the planning on national action mitigation and regional action mitigation. It's launched on 2011. And a year after, there is an establishment of Ran Kierka Secretariat. This secretariat is under Bapanas, who tasked to coordinate the activity from the national and provincial uh, mitigation action plan. And in Indonesian government, this, on 2011, uh, it's actually a voluntary initiative by Indonesian government to have the uh, voluntary uh, reduction uh, greenhouse gas target, but on 2015, there is a, a submission for the new government of Indonesia to the UNFCCC. There's a, a commitment for Indonesia. That's why in 2015, there is a, a review process from the uh, legal basis of the uh, mitigation action plan in both national and regional. And the implementation is recorded from 2010 up until right now. So basically, that's the timeline on the mitigation action plan document. Next one. 
So this is how the national and provincial level uh, coordinated by the Rangierka Secretariat. So Rangierka Secretariat hold as an overall coordination on technical assistance and capacity development, developing guideline, training materials and exercise, and uh, connecting the national level, which is ministry uh, representative to the provincial level. And on the right side, you can see how the national mitigation plan or RANGRK as a, a reference for the provinces to develop RANGRK, the provincial mitigation plan. Uh, for your information, there are 34 provinces in Indonesia. So uh, each province also have the initiative to develop mitigation plan with their local context. And this provincial level is have a different role than the district and city level. That's why here it mentioned that provincial level have the role to coordinate uh, district and city. This is the core of the presentation for the timeline because after we discuss about the uh, document itself, the planning document, it is time for the monitoring, evaluation and reporting. Uh, at, in 2013, there is no standard standardized MER and there is, that's why it's developed the guideline for um, monitoring, evaluation and reporting for provincial or the RAT uh, From 2013 up until 2017, uh, the standardized, but it's still manually operated. It means that the, the way to do the monitoring, evaluation and reporting, it's using like a paper or Excel sheet based. So from 2013, it's also being developed the PEP online, the online system for submitting monitoring, evaluation and reporting. And it's being done until 2017. So the, the result from the actual sheet is transported or it's entered by the Rangierka Secretariat to the system. So therefore, after the launching on the, the end of 2017, there is a launching of PEP online system. And from 2017 until 2018 and so on, it is, uh, it is already mentioned that the provincial government should also input their data to for the monitoring, evaluation and reporting through the PEP online system. So here is the brief of the PEP mayor by PEP online. Uh, PEP online is implementation of adaptive climate change mitigation action through periodic evaluation system towards the achievement of Indonesia's mitigation targets. The objective of the PEP online is to stimulate greater participation from the uh, all stakeholder through open, simple and accurate and easily understood climate change mitigation data information. This is the diagram which I will uh, explain a bit later. But here is the homepage preview, the PEP online. That's why PPRK, the low carbon development planning. And there is the link underneath that. And here, here is the process how to entry uh, the, the data entry process of Mayor Online at the provincial level. So to be known first, in the province, there is a provincial working group, which led by the BABADA, which is the Regional Development Agency. The member is the regional government agencies from different sector, energy, including transport, agriculture, forestry, and waste. The first the contributor, which is the regional government agencies, input their data and then going to be validated by the uh, national level in the Grand Gierka Secretariat, there is liaison for sector. And if the data is uh, have to be revised and going back to the province, uh, the technical contributor should revise the data. And after all going well, it's finally going to the supervisor, which is on the province level, the coordinator, the Papada. And then the data will be available as a database and can be accessed for the uh, user. Uh, here's the short format, uh, what is consists of the mayor online, at general information, the name of activity, data sources, and the four is technical data input. Uh, to be precise on the technical data input, here is the most important thing that how to calculate the emission reduction is from here. Uh, you can 
it, it's all in Indonesia, but it's actually consists of the information of, for example, the uh, capacity or the uh, operating hours and so on of the technical data input. So from there, there is a, a calculation to uh, resolve the emission reduction. Here is the dashboard for the mayor online at subnational level. This is the preview that only can be accessed by the province level government. Uh, it shows that the recapitulation from all sectors in here, green is for land-based sector, orange is, is for energy sector, and blue is for uh, waste sector. But this is still empty because this is the Otherwise, if you, the, the only person that can access this is the provincial government. And here is for the information for the public access. Uh, if you click the link previously mentioned, you can see that there is a 6,000 mitigation action and there is a, a number of emission reduction. There is a map of Indonesia and if it is, can a click can be zoomed into the uh, different provinces. Here is the 34 provinces in Indonesia, which a number of mitigation activities uh, in subnational level since 2010. And for example, one example is uh, if we click on one particular uh, location, it could be accessed like this. This is for the waste sector. Uh, there is a information on that. Uh, who is the authority? What year is it? In which sector? And how much is the emission reduction potential recorded from this uh, application? Uh, and this, this is the last slide, I think, here. This is the recapitulation of all uh, sector using the presidential regulation supported by 34 province government. Uh, Rangierka Secretariat also involved the related ministries because Rangierka is on ministry level and Rangierka is on uh, subnational level. And it's a total to 13.46% up until 2016. And Indonesia's commitment in 2020 is 26%. But this is all the emission reduction potential. Maybe just have a time for additional slides. Just a brief one uh, for the onwards for the future. There is a new new presidential regulation being set up, a low carbon development planning, but right now it's still under uh, under uh, progress of the preparation. And as the Jacob mentioned previously, it covers both uh, three development aspect, economic, poverty, and greenhouse gas emission. And this is how a different sector related to the GIZ supported projects in Indonesia. So there is a lot of uh, projects, GIZ projects involved in this uh, developing of the policies for the low carbon development planning. I think, thank you for your attention. Back to Eva. Thank you very much, Rio. That was really interesting. I think uh, the the online system um, might be interesting for other countries, other projects as well. Um, so yeah, now I will uh, open up the floor for any uh, questions that come from the audience. So please feel free. This is now your opportunity uh, to raise it. I think by Charlie is also texting. So I might just start with one, um, Rio, because um, I, I mean, it seems quite complex. So what are actually the challenging in implementing the, the PEP online? Yeah. Uh, first of all, before I answer the question, uh, in the, the attendees box, I see one person from Rangierka Secretariat, Mr. Hari Gembira, Mr. Hari. Uh, if he can hear this, maybe he could also add some uh, answer if possible. But right sure. now, yeah. So answer your, your question, the one of the things that is difficult is that in Indonesia, uh, provinces have different role than the district and city level. So actually, several of mitigation action it's being uh, 
is the role of the province uh, governor, uh, province representative, but some of the other mitigation action is, can be done in the city or district level. The province cannot have the uh, power to to uh, to tell the district or city level. The province level have only have the power to coordinate, just only coordinate. That's the coordination thing is still have a big uh, challenge in, in Indonesian uh, leveling of the uh, government. And the second one is the, the changes of the uh, provincial government representative inside the provincial working group. The, the circulation of the staff is really often. So if one staff is already trained, but in the next year or so, the staff is changes to another staff, which is have limited knowledge. So that's why the capacity building is really important to be conducted in series. Yeah, I can imagine the turnover um, is yeah quite high. Yeah, but um, looking into that, I I think Bapinas well, because uh, CDIA is also working with Bapinas and uh, PTSMI that is under Bapinas. So I think it's uh, it's actually a quite uh, good organization to deal uh, with these issues. So um, but Shali is texting that uh, exactly that would also be interesting to uh, further discuss it for a project in. India. India, Vaishali, do you uh, w want to tell us what what kind of project? Okay. Um, hi, Eva, and uh, thank you all for this very structured uh, presentations. Um, there will be a new project uh, to start with BMUB funding uh, called Climate Smart Cities, and uh, it will be looking to some extent at. Uh, you know, all aspects of governance, uh, not really at the reclaim process, but then online monitoring, evaluation, reporting of certain interventions. So it would really be good to, you know, actually exchange on how things uh, progress and how things develop. We are still in the developing stage, so for us this is very, you know, interesting input that we got today. Yeah, Thanks thank a lot, Vaishali. Um, there is a question from uh, my colleague Suzanne, so uh, several questions. So uh, does the governance correlate with levels of government and how does community or individual actions considered in mitigation actions? Also, also the actions of administrations, uh, states and cities are making a difference what about the behavior of individuals, communities, private businesses? Uh, may I ask you, Susan, uh, to who, who you would like to, to raise this question? Or would anybody uh, like to answer it uh, from the speakers? Yes, to Lisa, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Well, um, of course, the 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 um, how the multi-level governance framework is shaped within a country depends a lot on the on the political setting, on the constitutions, and on the mandates that uh, the different spheres have. So this is one of the basic issues which defines the action at the different levels. So when, that that is one point. Um, Asking for the role of the cities, uh, of the citizens, of the communities and private businesses, well, I have just briefly mentioned that if you look at governance at a, as a whole, of course, first it has a very political issue, so it looks at the, the public actors. But of course, for implementing mitigation and adaptation actions, you will need also um, private actors for financing, for investments, etc. Uh, the businesses are very important for the behavioral changes that we need for a transformation to a more climate friendly world. Of course, also the individual, um, yeah, the individuals play a very important role. So um, without any doubt, it's not only uh, 
here and the public entities but um, as I was saying before into what I was presenting and if you look first in, into this policy fear how can the policy levels be better aligned and and better engaged to make sure they use the existing potentials then we were in and for the study that I was talking about looking only at the public actors but it does not mean of course that the private actors do not play a very important role as well. I, I hope this answers a little bit your questions. Otherwise, please feel free to, to pose another question again and we can get back to that. I, I think that was uh, a quite uh, good um, yeah, answer to that question as well. So are there any more questions? Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I would like to have a um, I, I'm having some questions to, to Jakob as well. So um, actually, the, the approaches you had in the different countries. So um, is there any possibility to get uh, this information, especially on the, uh, for example, the toolbox in Mexico or uh, some of the um, lessons learned you already gained uh, in, in Georgia? Yes, rather sooner than later, of course, we will try. Um, no, I would, yes, I, I, we, we are at the moment, we are starting in uh, com compiling these, uh, these things. We haven't, we haven't been that active yet. We started only a half a year, well, or ten, eight months, eight months ago. But uh, I will be happy to share this, yeah. Maybe, um, maybe I can drop an email when, when there's a possibility to put it on the Tuevas website. I don't know, is this a possibility that keeping updated this Tuevas website where we actually still have to put in our basic information, but to upload then more information uh, via this uh, channel? I don't know. You can you can always share with us the information, uh, especially with Lucy. So we will distribute it among our members. So if you have several information points or links that you think is uh, is useful, so uh, please share the idea with uh, with us. So um, with me, Vaishali, and Lucy, and then we would uh, distribute it in to all our members because often it is not only relevant to the persons that connected for this uh, for this call yeah all right all right i mean as far as i know the, the ndc toolbox for example it, it exists so far only in spanish that's a bit our problem with the different languages but um we'll see if it makes sense uh, to to then also um yeah well translate it into english or what we have in spanish and english we'll see yeah great thank you very much there's um, another point from Lucy. So she would like to ask Rio about the challenges on data. What works well in Indonesia and where are the difficulties? Um... Okay. Uh, I'll try to, to pass this uh, question to Mr. Hari Gembira because he is the, from the Iran Kerka Secretariat. Hari, could you answer? Uh, hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My, my name is Harry, and I'm from Secretariat Rangerka under Bapenas. So about the question, uh, I will try to answer it. Uh, so the main uh, difficulties about regarding the data is that uh, mitigation action is quite new for uh, everyone in Indonesia. So uh, the activity data or the parameter that required to calculate the GAG uh, emission uh, is quite hard to for people in province to gather it. So that is the, the uh, and especially uh, if you all remember about the explanation of point two regarding the circulation of uh, people that mm -hmm. know about the calculation of GHG emission, not all of people uh, included in that calculation. So, uh, so uh, when the 
when the person who know about the calculation move to other institution, not uh, the uh, the pe people left behind is like uh, they don't know how to get up the data that required to calculate the GIG emission reduction. That is that is the, uh, the difficulties regarding the uh, the data. If you if you rail if rail want to add some another point, uh, please. Rail. Yeah, yeah. Agree with uh, Mr. Hari uh, about the rotation of the staff is really big challenges. However, also the data itself, the data availability in Indonesia, uh, we are still progressing to improve the quality of the data itself. However, at the current condition, we are in Indonesia looking to have the online system to to set a system which is the data accuracy and so on still need to be to be looked further. So with the current data, it's already up in the system, already calculate the emission reduction, but however, the accuracy thing is another uh, ch challenge in, for the data. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is really a, a good insight uh, in all these, uh, in, in all your projects. And actually, I think especially the PEP online, uh, it's something that under GI set and uh, its efforts on digitalization is a very, um, yeah, good, good method. So uh, Vaishali also um, mentions like data accuracy and availability is usually a problem in all countries. So um, including India, yeah. Um, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, not only Indonesia, uh, India, in most of our countries, we're working in Asia. So uh, we need to work with the data that is available and uh, yeah, start sometimes uh, also from uh, with the, w what we have, yeah. Thank you all I very want, much. Can I, yes. sorry, if I have one, 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 one second, so I just want to mention again that um, this, this uh, development of the PEP online system, um, many donor funded programs have been involved there since 2013, so it's not only a GIZ uh, baby, and it's also definitely not, um, not a weekly um, uh, activity, so the actual development, it was uh, mostly supported by the GLAMA one project in Indonesia. So just for clarification, but we now we work further on this, it will be further developed. And that's where the where, that's where now at the moment the Viklim project uh, plays a role. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, so, if you have any further questions to the speakers, so please feel free to send them an email, drop them a line afterwards, um, and we will also share all this information, the PowerPoint slides as well, the recording. And if there are any links you want to share uh, from the speakers, so please uh, send send them to Lucy, and we will also combine it in the email to everybody. So thank you very much. It was a very good insight. Uh, thank you, speakers, uh, Lisa, uh, Jacob, and Rio for for this uh, for these in-depth discussions. And uh, I hope to see you in another webinar again. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, all the best. Please uh, feel free to um, yeah share further information. Thank you. Thank you.